Today we're shining a spotlight on Drag Queen Story Hour. You might have seen flyers for it at your local library. Drag Queens read stories to children. The event promotes inclusivity and freedom of expression. But it's received some backlash across the country and here at home. Earlier this week, we told you about the vandalism that occurred outside the home and office of New York City Councilman Eric Botcher after he showed support for a Drag Queen Story Hour at the 20th Street Public Library on Saturday. There were also protesters physically harassing his neighbors. Councilman Botcher joins me now, along with Marty Cummings, a local drag performer who has done several drag queen story hours in the city. Thank you both for being here. We really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having us. And Councilman, if we could start with you, uh, a scary situation, not just for you, but for your neighbors as well. What has been the situation today and yesterday after all of this has happened? So beginning uh, right after the drag story hour on Saturday, I started receiving threatening phone calls on my personal cell phone number and Monday afternoon at my office some people gained entrance to the office building they got up to our floor they were banging on the office door for over half an hour and screaming these horrible horrible epithets child molester groomer child predator and when they left they vandalized the hallway a few hours later I was at a synagogue at a menorah lighting and I had my phone on silent and when I was leaving I looked I had all these messages from my neighbors I knew immediately that meant that they were at my home they had gained entrance to the building two of them were arrested when I arrived there were horrible epithets written on the sidewalk all the worst things you could call someone pedophile you name it and apparently um, one of my neighbors was shoved into a car a neighbor who tried to tell them they shouldn't be entering the building so it was a really really uh, ugly ugly display of of hate and just unhinged bigotry and what are your concerns now for for you and for your neighbors as well is there security in place what is your plan going forward I feel safe the NYPD has been really great throughout this situation they were on the scene immediately both at our office and at my home and everyone in the block has been really really incredible we're all in this together it's been an incredible display of solidarity and this all happened after you showed support for a drag queen story hour and marty i wanted to ask you you've been involved with this for is it five years now uh for about five years yeah and drag story hour is such an incredible opportunity for kids to learn about inclusivity acceptance it's a moment to spread joy um it's it's completely opposite of what these protesters are saying. In Drag Story Hour, they have 59 chapters in 45 states, seven international chapters. And the reality is, look at the, the stat from the CDC, the, the leading cause of death among children in this country is gun violence. So why aren't these people putting their focus on that and working on those issues instead of attacking uh, a, a group of performers who are trying to uplift and bring some joy uh, into the world? I wanted to ask you, why are you involved and why did you start getting into these libraries and really talking to children. What has your experience been like being around? Well, drag, drag has been a part of queer culture for ever. Uh, and now it's part of the mainstream culture. Look, we have RuPaul's Drag Race and we're here. And, and whether these people like it or not, it's a part of our, our society now. And drag is an opportunity to educate people um, uh, and to teach young kids about uh, just loving yourself, accepting yourself. So many kids, grow up or in school and they feel bullied or othered and, and don't know where to fit in. So Drag Story Hour is a time where they can go hear a book about a unicorn, you know, something silly and fun, and then they get to see somebody in a fun costume doing it. It's not, it's not sexual, it's not perverse, it's literally just somebody reading a book in a library or a school. That's it. And Councilman, what are your hopes going forward after this story came to light? I hope that we've been able to shine a light on who these people are because this is a a group of unhinged conspiracy theorists and this is just the latest conspiracy theory that they've latched onto the people who came to my home are the same people who went to the health commissioner's home over the vaccines 
They're the same people who splashed paint on the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. mural. So this is just the latest unhinged conspiracy theory that's being ginned up by the right-wing politicians and on Twitter that they're latching onto. It has no basis in fact. Well, we appreciate you for coming on. And just before we go, your message to the community who may have questions about Drag Queen Story Hour. What do you want them to know? I would just tell the community to open your mind and your heart. And it's like Eric said, what's happening on Twitter and what's happening from certain politicians' mouths, it, it carries weight. Using old tropes like groomer is dangerous and will get people hurt. And here in New York City, we have a council member, Vicky Palladino, who has used those words against her colleagues. Their followers will listen and take that into action, and that's dangerous. So I encourage people to open your minds, open your hearts, and let kids just enjoy a story hour. You know, of course, there's nightclub shows and then daytime shows. They're different. And if you don't want to go, you don't, don't have go. to go. <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking some time to talk to us today. We really appreciate it. And for more information on Drag Queen Story Hour, you can head to CBSNewYork.com. We'll be right back.